Hello, it's me, Michael, but you know this because you've been watching my YouTube channel for a while. Today, we've got a special guest on. Arian, he's from Germany. I know him well because we've seen each other twice at Men's Fluential Conference. He's, um, he's, just my, he's my stalker on Instagram. I'm his stalker on Instagram. He's now into some crazy stuff with his agency. I want you to have a closer look at what he does. He is 22 years old. Like, that's it. You're going to listen to him and you would not believe his age. Uh, we're actually talking about this. We're talking about how it is for younger generation to start their own business. And what does that really mean if you can find your passion? Should everyone have a passion for something that they do? We get into all sorts of things, Instagram and otherwise related. Enjoy this one with uh, Arian. All his links to all his stuff that he does is in the description below. Um, hello, hello to you, hello to everyone who is watching this or listening to this. This is yet another uh, podcast interview, but it's going it's to be different. It's going to be different again from any of our previous interviews because uh, the guest that I've got on the show today is um, it's a good friend of mine. He's a good guest. Uh, but for those people who don't know you, give me two, three minutes of who you are, where you're from, what's going on with you. Sure. Well, thank you, Michael, for having me, first of all. Uh, my name is Aaron Ney. I'm a 22-year-old young entrepreneur from Germany. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm working on my own company, which is called Vol Media, which is a full digital marketing agency. Uh -huh. And then I also have my personal brand, uh, which is on Instagram, where I do all different kind of things around entrepreneurship and fashion and motivation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but but the, the agency, let's, let's talk about it straight away. Like mm -hmm. a 22-year-old opening agency, that's a very bold move. That's a, that's, a, that's a move uh, that tells me and probably a lot of people, 20, what does 22-year-old know about the world? I know more than most people in my niche. Okay. That, that's all that matters because like, yes, it's right what you're saying. It's like I'm, I might be very unexperienced like in the bigger picture of all things, mm -hmm. which I also don't think. But um, in my niche where mm -hmm. I'm working for, for like four to five years, I'm operating in a specific field of social media. Uh -huh. I'm one of the best. Okay. Um, and therefore, you don't have to like be an all rounder to be good at something. You have mm -hmm. to like know the one thing that you're doing, mm -hmm. and you have to offer that. And it's what, so. What does the agency do exactly? Um, so we basically uh, do. So let's say you have a company or your personal brand, mm -hmm. and you want to do social media, but you got no clue how to do it, or you want to improve doing it. Uh -huh. We do everything for you. So okay. I got videographers, photographers. Um, designers working for me full time, okay. and uh, basically, so today we have a shooting, for example, right, uh -huh. uh, with Christelius. He's one of the biggest online marketers in Germany. Okay. We do his whole Instagram. We have a whole shooting day, and we basically bring two of our videographers, one of our photographer. We'll basically shoot all around his um, uh -huh. positioning. Right. So okay. with him, he's like an edgy entrepreneur, a bit like aggressive in marketing. Mm -hmm. So we will like provide all sorts of content that relate to that. Uh huh. So it's, but, but okay, but I guess that the online marketers and the online people understand Instagram and understand Facebook, understand that you need to be there in order to succeed. But what about a, a, a bakery or, you know, a butcher or, or a shop down the road, a florist? Like, could they come to you? And also, would you be able to help them? Because sort of online people get this. But what about right. sort of offline, brick and mortar kind of people? What um, do you do for them? Do you do it anything? It, de it depends on the budget. If they have the budget, mm -hmm. we'll do it. But okay. I, I don't think they have. Uh -huh. um, we we talked to some restaurants, but like the the max a restaurant can pay is like five hundred to a grand a month, okay. from our experience here in Berlin. Yeah, and that's not enough for us to to do our activities. Right. Um. So therefore, it happened in the past when we mm -hmm. first started. We like got um, two restaurants on board and it really really like worked out well for them even with a positive ROI because mm -hmm. we started doing Instagram and mm -hmm. the restaurant itself was already that 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 not famous but like people loved it so much mm -hmm. like with mm -hmm. a passion mm -hmm. that they loved engaging with the content following and mm -hmm. it brought in so many new eyeballs and what we started doing then was like posting a picture which says 
um, show this picture to a waiter and you'll get 20% off. Nice. Things like this. Nice. And this is like, this really easily showed the host of the restaurant that mm -hmm. there can be positive ROI from social mm -hmm. media. Mm -hmm. So this is how we operate it with them. But it's, it's, it's amazing to sort of compare and combine the sort of online with offline. I always expect... Uh, you know, when I go to a restaurant or I go to a barber or go to any shop, like I'm thinking, I'm entering this this shop, this brick and mortar, and there is there is nothing to engage with me on my phone. So, for instance, you know, I'm, I'm walking to a, a furniture store, right? I'm walking mm -hmm. around like, oh, yeah, nice furniture. Yeah, my wife is looking at something. And I'm thinking, wouldn't it be cool if all of a sudden you've got like a notification saying, oh, oh, you in this shop? <clears throat> what about 20% off? Like, go and speak to Bob about like... I would do it because I'd be like, oh, yeah, uh, where's, where's, where's Bob, you know? And, but no one does it. No one does it. And it's so interesting that, you know, those companies spend probably loads of money on marketing. Anyhow, you know, uh, doing all sorts of things, crazy stuff that, that doesn't work anymore. But they, they don't do any of that, what you've mentioned. And it's very interesting that that space is so still untouched and, you know, not explored, in my opinion. What do you think? Do you see that as well? It's, it's extremely interesting because there is a big um, debate but situation going on with one of our clients. Mm -hmm. So their name is called Rocker Nutrition, which is one of the biggest nutrition companies here in Germany. Uh -huh. And they are a pure social media company. Okay. They got like they started with social media. That's all they do. Uh -huh. and that's how they get all their customers, which are a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And now what happened is they want to go to the supermarkets and mm -hmm. sell the products there. Mm -hmm. So the most established supermarkets here in Germany, Rewe, mm -hmm. they said, oh, no, no. No, no, we don't want um, social media companies who can't sell any products. Now, what happened is they went to some to the first Rick and Mortar stores, to mm -hmm. some small ones, mm -hmm. and they got sold out ro like right after, immediately, yeah, absolutely, like absolutely. immediately. And then some of the other, so Rewe is partly owned by Rewe, and they're uh -huh. franchising some of the um, so the stores. So some of the franchisees bought Rocker Nutrition, uh -huh. and now what happened is. They sold out as well within a blink of an eye. And now the CEO of the actual uh -huh. Hever has to be like, oh shit, like, yeah, what's that, happening here? Yeah. And it's because there is a huge power in social media. And I totally, like, well, I got I got born and raised with it. But yeah, like, yeah. I would see, if, if you're not on this right now, like, it doesn't make sense to me. Like, everything I do, everything I operate with, I see social media. But like, I still, if, but I still mm -hmm. hear, I still hear people... Even creatives, you know, I've got photographer friends and, and, and other, you know, videographers friends, and they say, well, social media doesn't sell, we don't know why, like, we don't know how to do, how to market. And I'm thinking, uh, oh, but what do they need to see? Like, what, what, where's the proof that they need to see in order to start, you know, produce? because they don't know, like, should you give free content? Should you do competition? Should you just spam? Should, like, like, there, there is a very straightforward line, like, I'm, I'm, I want to be on social media, but what do I do on it? Like people don't know. Right. Uh, right. What would you say to a to a photographer or to a to a freelancer of some sort? They've got a set of skills. They may be on Instagram in the way that they post the pictures of a cat and dogs, or maybe on Facebook. Like what would be, let's say, two or three things they should be doing, start doing immediately. Like what would you right. say? Right. So as a freelancer, you want to get you want to get contracts, you want to get deals, right? Uh -huh. And now here's the thing: I'm an employer. I employ freelancers, mm -hmm. and the only where, where, um, place where I look mm -hmm. for their work is on their Instagram accounts. Mm -hmm. I'm not even bothered to go on their like on their websites anymore that yeah. much because an Instagram account can be a portfolio, and you yeah. should showcase your skills over there. Mm -hmm. Like, mm -hmm. and it's in a nutshell. It's like it's mm -hmm. so accessible. You just scroll through the feed, and then throughout the followers, you also have like a social proof, a kind of feedback, which tells me okay they're liked or not. So. If you're a photographer, you should start putting out your work on there. Like select a positioning. Like mm -hmm. let's say you are a landscape photographer, make the best landscape pictures, post it on Instagram. Um, but also show it, the process of how you do it and show how you know uh, you do a bit of a like a like a free content, maybe a minute videos, and uh, to tell you, oh, this is how you should do a landscape photograph. This is how like explaining yes. of, of 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 how you got there. Yes. Yeah. So I, on my feed itself, I would mm -hmm. more so do like the actual content, the art mm -hmm. pieces. Mm -hmm. But I have a very good example. Today with the shooting, um, I told you I have two videographers, mm -hmm. right? One of them is working for me full time and the other one is a freelancer, which we'd like to try out to mm -hmm. potentially get into our team. Yeah. And with him, I went on his page. He got recommended to me. It was all like um, videos that he made. 
but in his Instagram stories, there was a format that was called Editing Sunday, uh -huh. where he just talks to the camera, like I have my motivation uh -huh. money, he just like talks to the camera, and he explains how he's editing things. Nice. And this was honestly the only reason why I actually wanted to book him, nice. because he gave away more of his persona. He showed me mm -hmm. that he actually mm -hmm. has a passion about what he's mm -hmm. doing, that mm -hmm. he's truly creative. Mm -hmm. you know? And these kind of things you can simply showcase raw and unfiltered into mm -hmm. a camera, whereas if it's just like a website, you don't know, you have to call, and then they know what kind of situation it is. Like It's, mm -hmm. a, it's an interview situation. So mm -hmm. you'll be like, yeah, mm -hmm. of course I'm creative, of course I'm passionate. Yeah, 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 but like, of course. Yeah, yeah, this true. shows me how the person actually is, raw, and like that's what I want, what I, I need. I like it, you know? I like it. But it's in the agency is not where you started. So how did you? How do we? How should we listen to twenty two year old with an agency? Why should we listen to you? Like, what? Wh right. how, how did you start? Where? Where was the beginnings? Well, I'm gonna give you a short summary of my life so uh -huh. everybody like knows who I am, what I do. Basically, mm -hmm. I got born with my mother. She came from Iran, and my father from Germany. And um, well, there was a lot of like, let's say, unnice situations with mm -hmm. like alcoholism and violence at home. Mm -hmm. So my mom, mom and I, we moved out and she raised me alone. And what I would do is I would like a lot of the things that I saw, I would apply in school and whatnot. So I would like bully other people. I got bullied and whatnot mm -hmm. until I was 16 years of age. Mm -hmm. And what does a 16 year old do? He goes, okay, I have a big goal now and I want to get a millionaire. Mm -hmm. Not knowing that mm -hmm. that's not like the end result, like the, you know, the big thing, yeah. like with 16 years of age, it's like, you're like, yeah, I want to get a millionaire. That, that, that sounds sick, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so I changed my GPA from 2.8 to 1.4 within half a year. So 1.0 was the best in Germany, 5.0 was the worst. Mm -hmm. So extremely good grades. Mm -hmm. um, then I got into law school while I was still in high school, mm -hmm. uh, which was like a talented people program or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, And I basically had my, my study place safe. I could have studied law at one of the best schools in Germany. Mm -hmm. But then I found out about WHU, which is the best business school in Germany. So I applied to that one, and I got accepted. And I, out of like 10,000 people, 200 get accepted for one year. Nice. Um, so I worked really hard to get in there, and I wouldn't call it luck. I just like, no, I worked hard for it, so mm -hmm. I did it. Mm -hmm. And what happened then is, and this is where social media and Instagram comes into play, um, I was like calculating all these numbers, understanding how business work and what are mm -hmm. one of the most elite schools, but what was missing was the creative part, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And that's why I started my Instagram account. And I started at first with some stupid landscape photography. That's like what most of my followers didn't even know. Like my first pictures were landscape photography pictures, uh -huh. uh, which I just casually took uh -huh. until I would like later on get into more fashion and mm -hmm. entrepreneurship which took me like three years to now establish my standing of 300,000 followers. Mm. Um, but yeah, basically my, my knowledge. So I, I, I positioned myself in a very high end niche mm -hmm. um, with like very aesthetically pleasing content. Let me put yeah. it like this. Yeah, yeah. And this really stood out to people and companies started to approach me and they were like, what you're doing is amazing. This kind of content, can you do it for us? Mm -hmm. And that's how Evolve Media got started because mm -hmm. some of the most prestigious companies on the market came to me and they were like, hey, we'd, pay, we'd love to pay for it. Yeah, Can you do it for us? Yeah, yeah. So that, that's kind of where I got my standing from. Like, yeah, I'm 22 years old, but I also, I, I, I ran faster than most of the people who are like 10 years older than me. Yeah, it's true because it's uh, all of a sudden at 22, you could be easily, you know, uh, having five, six years of, of business experience, which is, you know, a lot more than people after university, you know, 23, 24, they, yep. they, they get in a first job, they, before they, you know, they, they 30 before they know it. And it's like, the age doesn't really matter. It's what you did and how you, how you doing it. It's, uh, the I always say age is just a number and it's, yeah. it's the truth. Like, I, some of our most talented photographers, believe it or not, they're 16. Mm. They're still going to high school, they're working for me. Crazy. But I don't care because yeah. at the end of the day, what counts is the result. Mm, absolutely. I always say that. And like, I don't get, I don't care how you get to the result, how mm. old you are, what skin color you have, what mm. nationality mm. you have. Mm. If your result is good, mm. that's what matters to me, mm. you know? And that's what good company owners see as well. And they don't see me as like, oh, he's 22, he's young, he's unexperienced. It's more of like, oh, wait, he's 22. I thought he was 28 because of the way how mature he is. Mm. Mm. And then they're also like, Oh wait, but this is social media. This is a new thing, so they have to be young. 
Mm-hmm. So it's more of like mm-hmm. an advantage rather than a disadvantage. Mm-hmm. Exactly, because um, how often do you have to sort of convince people that you are 22, but what you can do a lot of things like, do you ever have that conversation with companies? Because companies, you know, run by 40, 50 years old, there's like, who's this du- young dude like telling us what we should do? And, you know, okay, he's on this, he's young, he knows Instagram, he's got good following, all the good stuff, but is he a business? Like, how how often do you have to challenge that you know that they never. say never okay I, I never had to because okay. the, the thing is i act really maturely around mm-hmm. other people mm-hmm. and there are things um which are very important to me that my mother raised me with and mm-hmm. they're called manners mm-hmm. if you have manners mm-hmm. um you don't seem immature you seem mature no matter mm-hmm. what your age is and mm-hmm. also have this beard which mm-hmm. like makes me look a bit older uh, uh, uh. but like um i sometimes sign a deal with somebody and then like Two months later, they go and ask me like, "How old? How old, are you? How old are you, by the way?" I go like, "22." And they go like, "Yeah, but like for real." It's like, "How old are you? Like 28, 26?" I'm like, "22." They're like, "For real?" I'm like, "Yeah." yeah. Like that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. But like by that time, they don't even care because mm. the results are speaking for itself. Mm. Mm. True. Like we put out the best content, we we create the best content, so it's it's more of an advantage at that point. Yeah. Um, and also, if some if if somebody listening is at my age right now and it's like a thing like, oh well, I'm not that mature. Mm. Well, you should always try to make this turn this into your advantage mm. rather than your disadvantage. True. See the side that you're more dynamic. You need uh-huh. less sleep. You can mm. be more creative. You were born and raised with and all probably this you don't media need stuff. that much to live off. Like you don't need thousand yeah. pounds a month to live off. You can, you can probably uh, do a lot of things for free. And that's a good question because how do you? What's your view on working for free? Like how mm. often should we do this? How how long for? Should we do this at all? Like, what's your view? Yes, I love it. I love it. Um, so I have a basic understanding in life, a basic principle, which goes: provide value first. Mm-hmm. Let me repeat that because it's very important. Provide value first. What I mean by that is, in life, if you provide value to other people, mm-hmm. it'll turn back to you. Mm-hmm. It's it's very simple. Antonio Centeno taught me that. I know that a lot of listeners mm-hmm. know that because mm-hmm. the situation how it started was like, I asked him like, hey, Antonio, can I be a speaker on your event? And he was like, Arian, I love what you're doing, but you have to provide value first. Mm-hmm. I was like, hmm, what does he mean by that? That was like five years ago or something, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And so I was like, all right, all right, let me provide value for him. So I was like, all right, let's put together a list of the 10 best Instagrammers and I will help you research everything. Mm -hmm. So I started providing value to him. And then two years later, um, now last year, um, I was a speaker at this conference. And that's what what showed me and proved to me that if you provide value to other people without like Mm. asking for something in return, it will automatically come. Mm. And now connecting this into business, like, Mm. yes, the main focus of a business there are two main intents of a business right in school you learn you have to be profitable mm-hmm. and in reality it's you have to solve a problem mm-hmm. that's that's mm-hmm. a two main intents mm-hmm. for a business mm-hmm. from my mm-hmm. definition but yeah you have to be profitable which means if you always do work for free it's not sustainable mm-hmm. but what you have business. to do mm-hmm. what you have to do is you have to create a portfolio and credibility especially if you provide a service so what we did at first is we offered our services highly highly discounted we gave mm-hmm. like 80 percent off mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and we took on some clients which were not able to pay the prices that we charge now i remember back in the days i took on a client for 300 euros a month mm-hmm. and now um i gave a new client a discount from five thousand to four thousand dollars euros mm-hmm. and he was like thanking me Mm. He was legit like, he was like, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I was like, mm. well, yeah, cool. You know, mm. it's, mm. and it's, but the only reason why I can charge these amounts now is because we did the work up front. We mm. provided value at first. Mm. We created a portfolio of clients where we, where we showed, hey, this is what we can do if you pay us proper money. Mm. And I see it all the time, um, how, especially young people, they're like, they have such big egos for, for whatever reason. I don't mm. get it. Mm. And they go like, no, I won't work for free for somebody. Mm. But like, mm. you have to, mm. because there's there's nothing that tells other people like, hey, mm. this person is doing good work, mm. you know? True. Hey, Michael is doing good mm. suits. Mm. I don't know. How, maybe yeah. Tell t- talk about your experience. Did you? How did you do that? It, it's you no, know, it's because working for free is is a is a very intriguing concept because, um, for instance, some of the um, footballers that I'm dressing right now, they are. You know, either either free or at a cost price. Uh, yeah. And basically, you know, I've told them straight away that you know, if we get into this 
uh, uh, into this transaction that I'm going to make a suit for them. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I've got a kind of expectations of, of what that corporation is going to look like. And I've said to them, like, you know, I would like to see this or that. But I said, you can still buy it of me and then I, will, and I will not expect nothing from you. Like if you, you know, so, so I'm, I'll give you value. I'll give you the best suit you can possibly have. But, um, you know, it would be nice if we just do something together in a way, you know, of a, of a piece of content or, or something like that. And majority of them would say, yeah, let's, let's try this. And I've got some, some crazy people on board, like, you know, like some, some legends right now that I'm talking to. And, and you know, everyone wants, wants a piece of that cake, you know, because it's suit and nice. And especially if you, you know, if, if, if they go on my Instagram and go on my YouTube and all of a sudden like, oh, this guy is legit, you know. Maybe we should just, uh, you know, give it a try. So it's it's very intriguing. I, I'm I'm a hu- I'm a huge fan of of free work. I know it's it's getting to a point where you have to start thinking, okay, how am I going to make money out of this? But the money's always always follows, you know, the, the free yeah. work. I, I've noticed that, or or, or a discounted work. That, that if you give something for free or discounted, you're going to get something back out of that client four times, five times. You know, as right. much as you invested. What what I think is important about it is like mm. you're not gifting somebody mm. something. Mm. It's an investment Correct. because yeah. you're investing your time in it, which is Correct. your most valuable asset. And that's what people have to understand. Mm. They have to say, all right, this is an investment. I'm giving this for free. Mm. But also have to understand is where's the return on investment. Mm. Mm. And if if after a while you always gift to a certain amount of to a certain kind of people and realize there is no return on investment, stop doing it and look for another niche. Right. Like, don't be, I'm saying, don't be silly about it. Yeah. Do it strategically, right? Yeah. Don't just do it for the sakes of it. Don't just do it because there's a friend to coming to you and yeah. like, hey, can you do this for free for me? No, like he has to pay as a service. Yeah. You can give him like a, a small little discount, which is fair enough. But like yeah. w- with the time, all right, let me, let me, let me put it like this. With the time, your work will get so valuable that you don't even need to get dis- mm. discounts mm. anymore. Mm. It's like. Because all of a sudden you're going to have referrals. All of a sudden you're going to have people yeah. who. Uh, sort of understand what you do and and the work's going to speak for itself right i agree yeah yeah okay so how is your instagram uh, doing for for your own personal account how, like is that still growing are you still posting there are you still sort of trying to um, to be present there like what's what's happening there so basically what I'm using my Instagram account for, it's like my proof of concept for potential clients that we get into our agency. Excellent. Um, because there's some people like big online marketers that think they're like the biggest ones in Germany. They have like 50,000 followers. But then they go on my page and they go like, oh, wait, you have six times the amount of followers. You must know what you're doing, right? Mm-hmm. So it's like some sort of like portfolio proof of concept kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I myself don't enjoy posting that much anymore because – the content that I started posting was like really superficial at some points, mm-hmm. like the whole fashion, mm-hmm. um, which I still love, but mm-hmm. um, not as much anymore. Mm-hmm. And so what I really enjoy is the story function, right? Mm-hmm. I, I love talking to people, like really interacting. That's mm-hmm. what I love. Mm-hmm. And um, with the kind of pictures, like I have a very like a set structure. I so know. if you take a look yep. on my Instagram, people will know what I'm talking about. Yes, and I don't want to ruin the structure. And therefore it's like, I'm a bit of like a stagnation period with that, which uh-huh. is good because I love just interacting on the Instagram story feature. And that's mm-hmm. what I use my reach for. And mm-hmm. that's why I have this form and call called Mon- um, Motivation Monday, mm-hmm. where every Monday I do like a motivational Instagram story for mm-hmm. free. Mm-hmm. Right? It's mm-hmm. free content. It's like concepts that I learned from my university mm-hmm. because not everybody is able to have such great education for my mentors, for my actual business experience, not like something I read on YouTube, like actual business experience. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, um, and that's what people can like learn from and like hear for free. And that's what I love. Like I, I love providing value. Mm-hmm. So what if, what if people are 21, 22, 20 years old, they thinking of, of, okay, so maybe starting something, maybe, maybe they've got an idea and an eye for Instagram. They want to do something where, like, how do they, what was, what's the best way to sort of maybe learn a skill do they have to learn one skill and just absolutely double down on it and just and just sort of sell that or or give for free uh initially or or what's the sort of best way to you know we know university route is going to take you somewhere and some people still want to go there but for those people who are like man i'm sure and i'm not happy at uni i'm doing course that i don't like where do they start what what they could start be you know doing so sort of right now today what's hot what you know anything what what do you think Mm. they should be doing 
I think what's always like a good thing, especially if you're studying right now, if you're still in high school or university, mm -hmm. it's like a side passion thing. Mm -hmm. Because think about, um, I studied and I did my Instagram on the side. I didn't just quit university to do my Instagram mm -hmm. because that's like, this works for 0.1% of all people, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you have a very genius idea, you get very lucky and you really have something there, then it can work out. But reality is a lot of students talk about dropping out of high school, but they have nothing lined up. Mm -hmm. So really think about it. Why don't you just wake up one hour earlier than you mm -hmm. usually should and start working on a side project mm -hmm. and go one hour to bed later? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. a perfect example is my co-founder, Keenum. Mm -hmm. Mm. So what he did when he was 16, he went to high school. His parents had a restaurant, right? Asian Thai restaurant. Mm -hmm. He woke up two hours before he had to, before every school day. And he would meal prep for other students. And he started doing a business out of it, okay? So he sold meals, prep meals to other students. So he, he looked, okay, what resources do I have available? My parents have this, right? Um, if, if you don't have parents who mm. have that, you'll mm. have some talent. You have some strength and you just have to find out what it is mm. and you can just simply double down on that. Mm. So what he did then is he didn't, he wasn't like, oh, let me drop out of high school to pursue this opportunity. Mm. No, he went to high school, but he woke up two hours earlier every goddamn day. He was more disciplined than anybody else. And he started his business with 16 years of age, right? And he sold hella food to like mm. all the all mm. the schools in his hometown wow. right so if if you're 18 20 16 22 right now start something on the side mm. and as soon as you realize okay this is like actually working for me because what you have to understand is most of the times it takes you five six seven eight ten twenty ideas until you have something that's actually working that you can execute on mm -hmm. as soon as you found that double down on that mm. Yeah, it's true, and it's also um, it's 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 brilliant story, uh, you know, with with your guy because it's it's hundred percent true that you have to have something on the side. Like I had this fashion accessories and suits and things like that going for suits. I've started just recently, but any sort of pocket squares and bow ties, you know, anything that you can wear around your neck. I started this like you know three years ago, four years ago, and it's been sort of going alongside. Or the things that I've been doing, or the things that that made more money at that time, and we got to the point right now where they both making the same, and you're like, oh, okay, so now I can start thinking of dropping this and just you know doubling down on that, and that's right. that just gave me confidence that that there is something in it, and I I was learning in the process as well because, geez, how many mistakes are you going to make in the process? You know, the sooner you start, the better. You know, I'm I'm 35, I'm I'm done, I'm finished, I'm old, right? But it's like for all those people who are, you know, in their 20s, you've got so much time and you've got the phone and you can, you know, do whatever else with it. And, and it's, just, um, it's just a shame sometimes that you look around and they're like not motivated. Then, then they are not focused. They, you know, what's your goal for today? What's your goal for the week? What's your goal for the month? They don't know. And you think like, so how do you live your life? Like, I know you must obviously cover that. Uh, on your motivational Mondays, but what? How, how should people motivate themselves or or being motivated if they are twenty and they like, yeah, whatever, you know, let's just live mm. our life. Uh, by, that's a, you know, that's a very good day. question. Yeah. So the, the the mistake is the word motivated. You're saying uh -huh. how should people stay yes. motivated? Yes. If if you're if you have routines, mm -hmm. you don't need motivation. Mm -hmm. okay this is what something which i understood a bit later motivation is always a situational thing which is always just temporary uh -huh. right yes. and it comes and it goes as yes. peaks and then it goes again uh -huh. and um that's not really what's keeping you like forward what's keep gets you forward mm -hmm. what you have to have are healthy routines right okay. it's the same thing with working out you can go work out one week every single day but then you don't go work out the next week, you won't have any results. But if you go three times a week mm. for two weeks, for 10, eight, whatever weeks, then you will see results. So what's very important is to have those set steady routines, mm. right? Mm. Because otherwise you're down there. Mm. Now you have routines, you come up here, and now comes the motivation to play, then you have those peaks, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But you're never, you're never dropping down here mm -hmm. when nothing's happening, where you're stagnating. Mm -hmm. If you have routines, you can't stagnate, right? Mm -hmm. So establish healthy, healthy habits and healthy routines. So, for example, every morning by 9 
a.m. I've drank I drank two liters of water. Mm-hmm. Um, most people don't even drink two liters of water throughout the day. Mm-hmm. I've, I've got that done 9 a.m. Workout, same thing, 9 a.m., done. Wake up every day, 6 o'clock, done. Cold shower every day, done. Um, then there are things like this. If you're young, uh, motivational uh-huh. journeys, uh-huh. Uh, journals, right? Uh-huh. It's like, I really okay. love these. So you can Where is this from? What, what, what is it? Is it a particular company or what is it? So this one is from um, a German entrepreneur called Julian Siedler. This one is written in German. Uh-huh. Okay. But if you, if you just, um, it's called, I think it's called Self Journal or something. A friend of mine has that one. He recommends it. So this one is in German language. Uh-huh. But basically what you do is you, um, you have a 10 goal, a uh, 10 week goal. Uh-huh. You'd write that down yes. and then you have, you have, that's your macro goal, but then you have micro goals. Yes. So every morning you write down three goals that you want to achieve throughout the day. Mm-hmm. And then in the evening you write down that you achieve them or why you achieve them. And you write down positive things that, like, that. worked out very well. Yes. That's, that's, that's the, the self journal. That's what I talked about. Yeah. Yes. That's the one that's I've, I've got, I've got that one. Yes. And I've got a new, one that is, hasn't been actually opened somewhere. But yes, okay, so that's that works. Yeah, but the, it's it's all about routines. Can mm-hmm. you tell? Like, I'm not saying like, oh, this little hack helps you. No, it's like things that we do repetitively are like these green smoothies. Mm-hmm. Like, I drink them every day. It's routines. Mm-hmm. It's routines. Mm-hmm. Like, it's repetitive things. It's like, it sets you up for success. There mm-hmm. is no, there is no maybe. Uh-huh. Like, mm-hmm. it's incremental work that you have to put in those those little tweaks and 1% changes that improve your daily operations by a little bit, mm-hmm. if you count that up to 365 days, mm-hmm. you'll have 10x, 100x, 1,000x on how mm-hmm. you're improving. Mm-hmm. So therefore, establish routines rather than motivation. Mm-hmm. Okay. So um, quickly on goal setting, because that's always intriguing. Like how strict they should be, how often we should set goals, how... The long, like, should we talking about five year goals, or should we more talking be talking about a month or, or week goals or day goals, or like, uh, how big are the goals that we're trying to achieve? Because I want to be a millionaire. That's that's ten. That's ten year goal. That's like you cannot see that on Tuesday afternoon. Like, how does that, you know, how does that manifest itself on Tuesday afternoon? It's very difficult to say, right? So you have to break it down somehow. So, what's your take on that? All right. Um, so like specific timeframes I don't want to give because it's working out differently with everyone. Uh-huh. My co-founder sets um, one week, uh, one year goals, uh-huh. um, 10 week goals and daily goals. Uh-huh. But okay. um, it's, it's different with everybody. I, I have very similar plans, but what's very important is to have micro breakdowns. So basically daily or weekly goals because wh- how they help you is Let's say your goal is to have $1 million, okay? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's say in three years because it has to be tangible and time constrained. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it's not a goal. It's just a wish and mm-hmm. you can't measure a wish. Um, so let's say by um, 2021 or 2020, you want to be a millionaire. So now what happens is the first week passes by, you make no money. Okay, fine. It's just the first week. Yeah. First month passes by, still no money. Well, you have to some, some start somewhere, right? Mm-hmm. Like now, first half year, passes by now first year passes by and you make no money it's because you have no macro micro goals mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. basically to get to one million dollars you have to make one thousand dollars one thousand times mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so for your first week write down i want to make one hundred dollars mm-hmm. like start somewhere mm-hmm. have something achievable because now what happens is once you achieve mac- micro goals your brain gets conditioned to mm-hmm. succeeding Mm-hmm. Right, and that's mm-hmm. extremely important. We have to have those endorphins, those um, those happy moments where we actually celebrate our successes, and that's when we are actually able to achieve our macro goals. Because on our way there, we continuously feel success, mm-hmm. and that's that's when at one point when you reach your macro goal, you won't even feel like it was a big thing because you knew it was about to happen. Mm-hmm. We we it's it's very interesting because like if you if you truly envision and believe in what you want to achieve, you'll get there. I remember so we had a big negotiation with a client which was for fifty grand. And I was like my co founder and I like the whole week before that, we we're like, this will work, this will work. Like we know it will work. And we we this sounds odd, but like we knew how the handshake would feel even before it happened. Okay. And I was like sitting at that table. This guy was looking to my face and was going like, deal, and, like reaching over his hand. I was like, I know this feeling already. It feels so good. Mm, mm, you know? Mm. Um, 
But this only happens because you have macro goals and micro goals. Cut mm-hmm. down your big goals into your small goals. Mm-hmm. If you want to make a million, first mm-hmm. make a thousand, first mm-hmm. make a hundred, first make ten dollars. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. People yeah. want to be a millionaire yeah. by next year, but like how if you don't even have ten dollars in your pocket? Mm-hmm. Learn how to make ten dollars, then learn how to make a hundred, learn how to make a thousand. And once you make a thousand, learn how to let those thousand dollars work for you rather than work for the next thousand. Mm-hmm. That that's that's um that's how you go at it. Mm-hmm. Um Probably, I'm thinking of all the fashion and stylish folks. What would you say to uh, to them? Because, of course, you moved slightly, as you said, away from from the sort of core uh, that that got you noticed in the first place, which is the the sort of fashion and style. Like, what what's your? Are, are you still wearing all those three piece suits and uh, and you know and shirts and all the nicest shoes that you can possibly? You still get getting any joy from that, or it's completely right now focused on your on your media stuff? Um, well, right now I actually don't. What I like mm-hmm. doing is just wearing. So, all right. So what I love about suits is they make you look the best way you can. Mm-hmm. I'm a hundred percent. I a hundred percent agree with that because mm-hmm. just the silhouette, just like mm-hmm. the fabric, the feels of it. Like mm-hmm. I love suits, right? But what I figured is, um, what I like is more of like the underdog approach. Whereas I would like wear a hoodie like this. Uh-huh. Nobody knows what it, what it's from. Nobody knows how much it costs. But I know it for myself. Yeah, you know? yeah. that's yeah. what I like because I feel like many people nowadays just wear clothing to show off, to showboat, to show how cool they are, how self confident they are. But like. Can you really also drive self confidence from just like wearing what you like? Mm, mm, you know, mm. um, and that's what I saw I enjoy doing. Like I wear a lot of designer and high end clothing, but it doesn't look like it, and mm-hmm. I don't let people know. Well, now in the podcast I do because we talk about mm-hmm, it, but like mm, mm. my clients don't know that that my outfit is worth way more than their outfit. Mm. And they think that they're the ones balling, which mm, is good. Mm. I like it that way, yeah, you know, yes. because I want to be a bit more modest. I want to be like True. a bit underneath because I'm 22 years yeah. old. Like. My watch costs more than their outfit. They, they don't need to know that. Yes. Um, but basically what I'm saying with that is that you don't you don't have to wear high-end clothing. You don't have to wear suits. You have to wear what you're feeling comfortable in um, because that will get you the best results because mm. what looks better than self-confidence, mm. right? And um, so so when I was giving How, my speech yeah, – Go on. Yeah, yeah, go, go after on. You. Okay. So when I was giving my speech at Man Starcon, we uh, spoke about it yes. the day before. Yeah. Because I was wearing a casual outfit the first day and I was like, Yeah, tomorrow I'm wearing my double breast suit. It's like right. so nice, made to measure and all that. Yeah, yeah. And then the next day I come in with like um a black uh, jumper uh, and like some yeah. some Yeezys and stuff. And Michael goes like yeah. Arian, yeah. where's your suit? <laughs> you know? Yeah. It's like I had the suit on in the morning. I was standing in front of the mm-hmm. mirror and I was like mm-hmm. giving my speech to the mirror, but I was like I'm not feeling comfortable. Like, yeah. do I look good? Yeah, hell yeah. But like, yeah. do I really feel comfortable? No. Mm-hmm. So I wore like a casual outfit. That's like what it's all about. Like, mm-hmm. don't don't dress for other people only because mm-hmm. the people in the crowd are wearing suits doesn't mean you have to wear suits. But how about sort of you go in for that, um, the, you know, client meeting? You would wear mm-hmm. a suit, right? Uh, but not no. because, oh, you wouldn't. But, but I'm I just think, but, but I'm thinking like they all wear in suits, like especially if you go to yeah. a, a, an established place, you know, rather than yeah. a, than a startup or something. We have like we have like real estate for clients, for example, right? It's like yeah. super like high end, yeah. the best street okay. here in Berlin. Uh-huh. Super, super, lots of money. Super uh-huh. rich, super like uh-huh. uptight. Mm-hmm. I just go in there like this, like with a black jumper, ripped mm-hmm. jeans, and like mm-hmm. my, my 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 sneakers. Like, uh-huh. um, you can't fuck with me. Like you just yeah. can't because it's it's who I am. If yeah. you don't buy into it, I don't yeah. want to work with you anyways. Okay. Right? Okay. Um, and it's like maybe that's an ego thing to say, but like that's the way I feel comfortable. And like I will adjust a little bit maybe, mm-hmm. but not in a way that I have to like change who I am. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. But with at our, some point you would wear a suit. Where would you wear a suit right now? If you're not wearing it for uh, like a business investors meeting, I, it, it, where would no. you wear a suit? Nowhere. Anyway. No, we 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 had a we had an invest right. so we we're investing uh-huh. into a new company right uh-huh. now, mm-hmm. and we had a meeting like two days ago, and like people were wearing like shirts and suits, but like no, like I'm coming how I am. Mm-hmm. That that's that's enough. Like if you don't appreciate, that's it, your own loss, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but I would definitely yeah, wear one to like a, a funeral or a wedding, yeah, you know, because that's that's a point of respect. That's Correct. just respect. Correct. Right? You, you if know, you talk about manners, as you mentioned before, right? Yeah, uh, yeah, 100%. because that's uh, a lot of questions always 
come to me about that you know having a, a obviously a youtube channel as well people lots of people commenting about oh you know i don't wear a suit or why would i wear a suit i was like don't if you don't want to wear a suit don't it's fine it's yeah. still okay like it's whatever because mark zuckerberg doesn't wear, yeah it's fine if you're mark zuckerberg that you don't have to worry about anything anyhow like you know it's like no one cares what you're wearing anyhow uh, but it's 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 what you're comfortable with that's that's a good that's a good point yeah, one hundred percent. And like, if you if you tell me respectfully, like, hey, Ari, and like, look, uh, we have we have built we've worked so hard to have this credibility in this company, and like, we wear suits because of X, Y, and Z. We don't want to lose this prestige. Like, I'll think about it twice because, like, yet again, it's a it's a point of it's a it's a question of mutual respect and manners. Yeah. If they are respectful towards me and like give me a good reason to have to wear a suit, I might do it, but not because I have to, but because I want to, because I want to show respect back. You know, yeah. Um, yeah. Good. Right. Um, what would you want to leave our, our peeps with? Uh, like, is there any, 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 anything, any, any one place, anything that they should be looking into? Something that is hot. Something that you're passionate about. Something that that you know is going to become the next great big thing. What, whatever you mm -hmm. want to leave uh, the people with. It could be, you know, could be anything. It's, uh, it, you know. You've got two yeah, so there's there's currently this one big, big, big trend. Mm. Do you know? Do you have you heard of it? Like, say, real big trend. Have you heard of it? No. Uh, no. All right. So the the, the the trend is called like, do what you're passionate about. Okay. Yes. <laughs> there, okay. There's there's no there is no fucking hot trend because like yes, sometimes Instagram might be popping, sometimes YouTube might be popping, mm. but what if not? What if it's not popping for you? Mm. Like you should do what your strengths are. You should do what you're passionate about. It might be cryptocurrencies. It might be Instagram, social media. It might be doing a bakery. It might be being a hair cutter. Mm. It, it's just really what you enjoy doing. But mm. what's way more important than like talking about what's a trend is like to start now mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. do tangible action steps to go into it. Don't wait for it. Like now, right now, go do the first step, however small it is. And you will see that even if this is not what you end up doing, this one first step that you've made will get you to the place where you will want to want to end up and what you're passionate about. That's yeah. like that's like the most important the most important advice that you can take out from this interview from mm -hmm. this podcast just mm -hmm. go do what you're passionate about right now. Mm -hmm. Like in no matter what small scale because people underestimate the small things. Mm -hmm. I posted a fucking landscape picture. That's what it all started with. Huh. Okay? Right, it's true. But I have to I have to challenge you on this slightly. Mm -hmm. Passionate like that's so far fetched. Like I'm passionate about lying in bed and watching Netflix. I'm passionate about right. that. What that's, like, a, mm -hmm. that's a good thing, and it's also because like I I I still am looking for my passion. So that's a very good point. Mm. I only said that for simplicity because mm. you said like one minute. Mm. Yeah. What I mean what I mean by that is really um, go into a field of interest that mm -hmm. is somehow work related. Okay. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're a girl studying right now. Mm -hmm. Right, and you don't know what to do, but you really enjoy these YouTubers, but you're a bit too shy to do it. Well, then now start to write a blog, mm -hmm. because you can do it anonymously. Mm -hmm. um, now start to like post pictures on Instagram about makeup. I don't know. Like mm -hmm. it's actually about like starting something in the field that you're interested in. Mm -hmm. And um, yet again, like it might not be the one thing that you end up doing. My friend started doing um, a, a school prep meal delivery service. He's not in the, in the mm. food and beverage industry anymore. Mm. Like that's the only reason why I started working with him because I had so much respect for what he did back yeah. then. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, it's not always you. All, people always think like, oh, the one thing that I'm doing now, I have to do for the rest of my life. Mm. No, just no. go start doing some, do something that th that you think will get you slightly, just marginal piece more forward to the place where you want to be in the end. And I mm. promise you, I mm. promise you, it will be productive for you. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I think that's uh, that's a very uh, that's a very good point, um, and it's a very sort of uh, good place to uh, to finish this. We could be talking for another hour, I bet, uh, about a lot of things. There is a lot more things I want you uh, to tell us about, and but we definitely have to have you back at some point uh, when your agency is is flourishing and you've got more stories to tell about your agency and and what you do sure. and how you do things because um, it's. It's good. I'm, I'm, I'm obviously observing you from far. Uh, you know what you do on on Instagram and what what you uh, what you do in general. So um, it's good to see that that things are progressing well. 
Well, I have to give respect back to you because I see what you're doing. And I see, <laughs> I see you get in the meetings and you, I see some really, really beautiful clothing. It's Good. like, it makes me happy to see as well. So like, Good. only because you're the one giving a podcast doesn't mean you're the one not doing anything. You are mm. the one who's killing it as well. I love that. Good. Good. Thank you so much. Uh, I appreciate it. We'll, uh, we'll link to all of the things you want. Obviously, send me a, a quick note with the links you want to include in both podcast and YouTube, because probably that's going to end up on YouTube as well. It's a, it's a good stuff. It's a good 45 minutes of, uh, of what you, of what we're passionate about, which is, you know, do what you love and, and see what's going to happen, you know, and, and yeah, it's, it makes sense. It makes sense. Brilliant. Thank you so awesome. much. I love it. Thank you so Thank much you for so having much, me. Sir.